Most image sensors in use today are made of silicon. Silicon has some amazing properties. So here you see a silicon atom, and when you hit a silicon atom with a photon of sufficient energy, it releases an electron. And what's created is called an electron hole pair. So now if you have a silicon crystal, that's a lattice of silicon atoms, and you can make this with very high purity, you hit it with light, you have photon flux coming in, and you have electron flux which is being generated, there's going to be an equilibrium between the photon flux and the electron flux. So really, silicon does most of the work for you when it comes to image sensing. You hit it with light and it generates electrons. And the work that remains to be done, which is really challenging, is to be able to read out these electrons, convert them into voltage and read them out. And also, not to forget, that you're not looking at a single pixel, just one lattice of silicon, you actually have millions of pixels that you want to be able to read these charges out from. And that's where a lot of the work has gone in and to create these image sensors. Now this is what an image sensor actually looks like. This is an 18 megapixel image sensor and each pixel here is roughly one micron along each of its two dimensions, 1.2 from five microns in this case. That's really small. So you can actually pack in a hundred million pixels on an image sensor today with ease using today's technology. Now, this isn't quite like Moore's law. You know, in computations, according to Moore's law, every 18 months, you're going to be able to, with the same real estate, double your computational power. Well, that doesn't happen in the case of image sensors. In this case, you come down to around the wavelength of light, which is around, say, let's say half a micron. Once your pixel is in that region, further making it smaller doesn't really help you because the resolution is now limited by this diffraction effect itself, the wavelength of light, the size of the wavelength of light, and making pixels any smaller doesn't really buy you anything. So image resolution will continue to grow a little bit, but at some point, the only way you can increase resolution is by making the chips larger and larger. And we're almost there. So let's talk about the first technology that's used to create image sensors. This is called CCD, or charge couple devices. So here you see your pixels. These are all your pixels. Each pixel has, look at it as a bucket. We call these potential wells. These are wells in which photons arrive and get converted into electrons. So it's photon to electron conversion. And like I said before, the real challenge is reading out, converting these electrons into a voltage that's proportional to the number of electrons. So the way CCD works is that each row Actually, let's take a look at this row. The photon to electron conversion happens in the pixel itself, and each row passes its electron counts, all its electrons, to the next row, and that passes it to the next row, and the next row, and the next one, and finally comes down to this bottom row, where it is read out horizontally one pixel at a time, that is the electrons in each pixel are converted to a voltage right here. And then this voltage is of course an analog voltage, which is then converted by analog to digital conversion, which is A to D conversion to get your digital output right here. So that's the process. So these pixels are read out in this fashion. So that sounds simple, but it really is a transfer of charges from one row to the next, which is a real innovation here. And this is a technique called bucket brigade. So imagine that you have a string of people, each one has a bucket of water, and I would pass on my bucket to the next person and at the same time take a bucket from the person before me. So that's the way bucket brigade actually works. And so in this case, how do you actually move these charges from row to row? Well, the way you do it is you, you apply electric fields to appropriate positions underneath these buckets to slide or to shift these charges from one row to the next. And that is a really sophisticated piece of technology because along the way, 
you don't want to lose any electrons and you don't want to collect any spurious electrons either. So that's CCD technology. And then you have CMOS image sensors. CMOS is complementary metal oxide semiconductor, another type of technology. In this case, again, you have a potential well which, where you're collecting light, for instance, this one right here. But sitting right next to it is also the circuit that converts your electron to a voltage. So it's an electron to voltage conversion circuit which is sitting at each pixel. Each pixel has its own uh, circuit and it's not one circuit being shared by the entire chip. So in this particular technology, what you can do is simply address or poll one particular pixel and be able to read its voltage out. So you can go to this pixel right here or you can go to another pixel and, and so on. And for that matter, if you were interested not in the entire image, but a small region in the image, you can read out those uh, pixels at a much faster rate because there are fewer pixels, there are less values to read out. You can actually increase the frame rate of the cam camera substantially by just reading out that region of interest. So a lot of flexibility in the case of CMOS technology, but the price that you pay is that now your light sensitive area that you're exposing to the world is smaller because sitting next to it, you need the circuit that converts electrons to voltage. So CMOS and C CCD are both very popular technologies. In consumer cameras today, I would say that CMOS technology dominates because of its flexibility and it's really come a long way in terms of its quality. And there's more to an image sensor. So here you see the potential wells corresponding to pixels. So this right here, is one pixel, this is the next pixel. So that's the array of pixels and we'll call them photodiodes. But then sitting on top of each one is a color filter. You see, a pixel doesn't really know which color is a, a, of light is arriving there. It just is counting photons. And so in order to measure color, you're going to use color filters which sit above the pixel itself, the potential well. And at any given, uh, location, you can only measure one color because again, the pixel can't differentiate between colors. So you use one particular filter right here. Let's say a red one here, a green one here, a blue one here. And after you've captured your image, you can actually take these uh, red, green, and blue values which are scattered around the image and interpolate them to figure out what red, green, and blue would be at each point. And we'll talk about this later. So those are your color filters. It's called a color mosaic. And then you may be interested in knowing that each pixel actually has a lens sitting on top of it. This is called a micro lens. This is not the lens that's forming the image. What this lens does is that it just takes light from the main lens and is, it focuses this, this light onto the active area or the light sensitive area of the pixel which is shown down here. So this lens focuses light onto this tiny little window here. And reason, the reason that this window is smaller than the size of the pixel is because often, like I said, there's circuitry and there are leads and so on that are sitting around the pixel. And you don't want to waste the light that's falling on that region. So you take all the light and you channel it down to the active area. And here you see a scanning electron microscope, a beautiful image of the cross section of an image sensor. You see right here, the micro lenses. This is one micro lens for this particular pixel. Here you see the color filter. In this case, it happens to be a blue filter. Sitting next to it is a red filter for the next pixel. And underneath that is your potential well, your pixel itself where charges are being collected and circuitry to go with it. And note that the distance between the top of this micro lens right here and all the way down here to the bottom of the circuitry is 9.6 micrometers. So there's a lot of stuff happening. There's a lot of action going on in this very thin layer of silicon. And that's why I said to you earlier that you will see with the passage of time 
that there's going to be more and more circuitry built underneath these so that in a single wafer, you can have a perhaps image processing and computer vision happening with the image sensor layer and then your color layer and then your micro lens layer all being grown on one single wafer of silicon. And in fact, the main lens being grown on top of that as well. This is optics on wafer. This is all coming in the decades to come.